Okay, so hope you all had a free drink of water or some um, cup of tea or coffee. So now we're back. So now we're back to do a wee bit of work on the shoulders after creating this shape for the belly and for the hindquarters. So we're just going to take that corner of um, the front of the shoulder. We'll take the corner off there. We'll do the same. We're just going to take that corner off. Let's leave it open. Corner off there. So I want this to be symmetrical. And I want this to just wrap out and get symmetrical. So this is going to be where the, the neck will fit on here. So that's the first thing I want. I want to wrap it up so much of that. So we can put it on. And I'll just see where that lands. Well, the donkeys don't have very wide shoulders. Which kind of makes the, the swelling of the belly <laughs> gives it more emphasis. And the shoulders are not that big. So again, you can use your template as a guide. Just to give us that. Just, you know, don't need to be too precise at this stage. Just giving us that feeling of the shoulders. So if you can your, your straight line on your back, you can give yourself a straight line, no matter what you your symmetry. Okay. So I'm going to take the, oh, I haven't squished it too much, um, now I want to think about what position I will put my head in. That, you know, at this stage, everything is still solid clay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to cut. Now I've done the centre line. I'm going to cut a slit there. And open this up slightly. It would be easy to do this if I was going to have the donkey's head on it. I'm going to do it. What I want to do is just cut that open enough so I can slip the head and neck in to overlap those shoulders a bit. And as a guide, this is really just to think about the position of the head. Um, when it comes to your proportions, the length of the head from the tip of the nose to the back of the head here, not the mane, just the back of the head here. This length should be the same as the front of the head to the shoulders. So, um, now I'm measuring it, I know that uh, we're going to take out the corner of it. Um, so we'll put that in there. So at this point, your clay is solid and you can think about what position you want your dog, you know, just um, just move your head about until you've got, you know, the angle. I think I want this donkey to be quite a, a grumpy donkey. So that's the position. So he's going to be looking behind him. Um, I don't know if I can get the angle there. Well, I'll, I'll, 
I think so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit extra where I pushed the clay in to do that I'm just going to take that has guided me where I need to take clay away to make this bit now I, if you're firing the clay it's really important that you take a paintbrush or a long toe and push it right into the body cavity you created a cavity in the belly so push your paintbrush right in and give it a wriggle it just means that should any air get trapped behind at this point it has somewhere to escape but we are we are going to hollow it out and i'm just going to take that wee bit of the layer top of it and coil it okay. yeah, it's just a matter of just you know you can choose whatever pose you like um um, the simplest one is just with the heads looking straight ahead um, and you can just completely follow the template You just when you look at one needs done to make that fit. And then I just cross hatch and slip the center and cross hatch. Just I've just scored and I've put the neck in um, and put it into position there. I've just scored it. So I will cross hatch and slip on that. If you're making this from air drying clay, you don't need to worry about hollowing it out. But if you are going to fire it, we do. We're not. I'm not hollowing them out yet. We'll wait till I've got the position that I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Um, when you're positioning the the neck, when you're positioning the neck, one of the things to look for is this line of the back. It can rise slightly to the main, but with donkeys, it's pretty level. So you don't want your neck to be sitting too high or too low in relation to this back. Those together. Push it down. If you can lay your template over the top, I can see that shoulder just as I've been doing that. I have the clay has come through it. So also the neck doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the body. Um, it should have come in up there. Putting in that gullet line, that crease there, it just helps the you can just with small wee presses just manipulate it around and around the top to the bottom there. Now, when you're happy with the position of the head, you can, you know, 
gather up all your wee scraps together and make a wee prop. If you're using clay as a prop, um, do remember to put a wee bit of paper on the top or a wee bit of plastic just so your prop doesn't stick to your sculpture. I mean, this is all quite rough because clay obviously it's a first session is just a blocking in really, a bit of blocking in. Um, and these eyes are all the cut in. So if you're making a prop, make it too big and push it down to help compact it. Um, smooth it at the base so it nearly sticks on to the, it's almost like the roots of a tree, so that it's nice and stable. Yeah, that'll just stop it tipping over. Um, that means I can turn it around and start up fixing the side. Donkeys have quite a straight shoulder, so you don't want this angle to be, um, you don't want there to be too much of an angle, it's a fairly straight shoulder. So then I'm looking at it from the front and checking those shoulders, seeing it's symmetrical. I'm going to just put a wee bit of colour in the front there, just to create a wee small line or whatever. Any suggestions? I do need to thin some more of this tree in already. So there was starting to be more emphasis up here with this plane. The emphasis needs to be on that corner there. See how that got lost a wee bit. And also uh, another area that's got lost a wee bit there is, do you remember we put in a cross there from the outside corner of the eye, outside corner of the eye to the nose and the inside corner to here. And then we were able to tell that the fillers, when we drew that in, I'll just draw it again on the top. So there's no harm in saying things more than once. This is an area of fullness, and this is an area of fullness that builds towards, this area of fullness builds towards the muscle around the nostril. This area of fullness builds towards the muscle around the eye. But, the either side of that, we can take away clay. Okay. 
and just break a bit to the other end over there. And we'll probably won't go into as much detail tomorrow for the wee donkey over the wall. But um, these Friday afternoon classes, I'm trying to sort of challenge you to do a wee bit more, to have a wee bit more detail and definitely think about the def different planes. You know, so you don't treat the head as a block. You look for those different planes of the area under the eye, the area above the nose. This reduced area on the bridge. There. And you'll have a rise for the teeth around there. And then you know there's a dip around. It just makes the, the sculpture far more interesting to look at if there's that, those different planes. So I'm really just fiddling about here, tidying it up, making this neck appear straighter. Um, well, my concern was that neck was starting to, to look thick. Because I remember that I talked about the donkey's neck being quite thin and quite straight. So I have to keep coming back to that and checking. Even though this donkey's neck is bent round, I still want to have a feeling of it being quite straight. So then I just talk briefly about the planes of the shoulder. So there is a couple of different planes in the shoulder. You know, there's this flat area along the top that is at the, you know, going from the top of the withers to the point of the shoulder. That's quite a flat muscle. But in front of that, it blends in to the neck and almost a diagonal plane. Got it in. And then down here, it kind of rounds a bit more. So I'm rounding this and the centre, the highest part of that, or the centre of that circle, if you like, it's about here, point of the shoulder. And there's definitely got a pull feeling to the underside of the belly. And it's quite fat and round, but it definitely goes uphill towards the hind quarters. I'm just going to mark the centre line down where the two hind legs will split. There's too much of a dent there. I'm just going to give it a wee bit more flesh. There's a nice fullness there, but there's a dent there. So I'm just going to just a 
Check the street on my way back. Let's get rid of those. What I would advise you to do at home is stand up and check. Check that you're symmetrical in your shoulders, hindquarters, and belly from above, looking down onto it. Again with the shoulders, there's a fairly flat plane going from the withers to the point of the shoulder. Um, then there's a diagonal plane where it meets the neck. And then there's a rounder part What we can look for is you've done those two rounded shapes, then you need that to come into the center to create the chest muscle. Now, the chest muscle does have a bit of a cleavage, if you like, so it doesn't come in in a V, it's a bit of a cleavage in the center, but we still have to work at that committee. Again, looking for a created straighter neck on that side. You want to create a straighter neck on the side. Taking out, there's a, you know, I, it's almost wanting to go like a horse's curve. So I want to take some of that curve away. Try and go straight from the, the withers here. Just to make the neck narrower, more donkey like. Okay. So, as you're firing it. At uh, this stage, I would perhaps leave it overnight and then section it. Um, where I would section it is, I would probably section it from here right through and just lift that off, hollow it all out and join it back together again. I have already posted up a few videos of me hollowing out, um, but I'm not going to do that right now because I really to hollow it out you should really have it leather hard so I would need to leave it um, overnight then I would need to join it together and again leave it overnight so hang on I'm going to put the ears on next um, and then we will go to the this up and put more texture into it later but what I am doing that is it's just give me the line of that bit's me and, and this is bit's neck so that I can check that my neck isn't too hasn't got too broad 
Oh my god, I'm still feeling that emoji. Look at it's hundred and two. If you have your template, you can lay your template over the top and it will tell you exactly if you're too broad or too narrow. Okay, ears. So, um, in real life, the ears, you remember I talked about the measurement between um, the front of the head and where the neck joins the shoulders being the same as the tip of the nose to the back of the skull. Half of that measurement is the length of the ears. But with sculpture, it can be nice to do your ears slightly longer, um, just to make the donkey more donkey-like. Um, it's got an artistic license that I could call. So again, on your template, on your template, I have given you a guide for the line. Um, so this piece here is the ears. Make your two ears together, use one to help you make the other, and then, then apply them both together, rather than making one, attaching it, and then trying to make the other one the same. So, you can make, you can, you know, I've cut the piece of clay about uh, roughly the right size. What you can do is just, if you get a pen, so, um, wrap it around your pencil just to take the flat away from it so what you're trying to do is create a ridge in the back of the ear and just stroke that into the pencil This is really handy for making ears. So, oh that, I know that's too wide, so I'll just cut that off with a scissors. So, um, really, I should be, the you know, the ear should really only be about that length, and I'll just make it a little tiny bit longer. Just pinched off the excess clay. So let's make up my length. Twenty-two. I was told to kind of just feather out the inside of the ear. Well, that was far too big. So I'll just take scissors. I'm sure you want to shape it. Kind of trimming it, trim it in, and then still want to feather away a wee bit. And then I'll pop it down and try to get that ridge in again. And try the same length. And what, what you need to do when you once you've finished doing that, just as I did there, was to kind of remeasure it. And that ear has grown considerably, so I'm going to take a bit off. So I want to where your ear is attached, where that jawline comes by round, if you continue that. And then this line of the the jaw, if you take that up, and you are looking to attach your ear in there. So that's also where, where, where I'm measuring it from. Oh, I've taken far too much clay. So if I'm attaching it from there, so I have one ear like that. It's 
generally the ears have a the inside edge closest to the front is a shorter edge and this layers out round a wee bit more. Um hold on and also to how to do is not make it dead straight so that it has a wee upward inflection. So then you two of those and then you attach them. And if you think see the way I've drawn an X there, if you think of the ear being attached to the centre, so the centre of this ear being attached to the centre, you can then swivel from that point to you know, I think in the yeah, from the template I have your ears going straight ahead. If your ears are going straight ahead, try to make the line of that angle parallel to this angle. See where this comes round? If you think of this, that's where you kind of want your ears to be for straight ahead. But your ears can swivel right round. Because my donkey in this pose is looking behind him. I'm going to have my ears swiveled round. But they're swiveled round. If I put a, which I will do to attach it, a pen through the centre, I will attach and swivel that from the centre of that X. I'm just going to leave that in two years the same. Actually, doing another quick way of making the ears is just to let me say is just to roll it out into a bit of a taper. So this clay is just a bit deeper now. Let me go over there. So can you see there? It's uh, tapered. So we cut it to shape. Cut it to length rather. Um, so we take the curl of it and then create the ridge. To the back of the ear. Well, I can't actually see who's watching today um, because I find for the best quality I need the, the iPhone to be pointing towards the sculpture so I can't really see what's going on but if you're joining me for the first time today I do a class on a Friday afternoon which is this one which is slightly more complicated for people with a wee bit of experience and then the Friday afternoon class lasts between two and a half to three hours with sometimes a wee bit of a finishing off the following week. Um, the Saturday morning class is a make that can be done in under an hour. And the make tomorrow is the donkey over the wall. So I'm just going to make those two the same. Actually, out of the two, I prefer this, the proportions of this. This one was too big. I was going to carry away, so I'll just cut this one down with the scissors to be more similar to the donkey. What I'm also planning to do is to download these videos and save them onto YouTube, which means if you have a smart TV and you can watch YouTube on your TV, you can put the videos onto your big screen and watch them. Um, just makes it easier than that. And then if you're trying to watch along on your phone, um, you're concentrating on a wee tiny screen. So somebody suggested that to me and I was like, no, it's good. Okay, so we want to have both of them having an inside edge, just 
the shorter one and I might say those are the flares and I'm going to put the two together and put the two so that they're the same and then And I just can I use this paintbrush to position it here to push it onto the clay, onto the clay at the the point marked X. So I'm using this to push, to make a firm join with the rest of the head. And there, there should be a clear channel through from between the ears. So the ears don't sit side, you know, side by side. There's a gap in the middle. And yeah. um, you feel your ears are too floppy. Um, a wee matchstick. Just put up the centre of them. And just if you like. So when you're joining that together, you have the jawline. Those ears stay behind the jawline. So it's probably not as clear because he's kind of facing away from me. But if I follow that jawline round, I pull that cheekbone up. You know, my ear gets attached in there. So I think those ears are done. If I put both ears back, he'll definitely look more grumpy. Now that the ears stay behind that jawline.
So then you would check for more angles to see if the ears are the same length and that they appear to be symmetrical where they've been attached on. Um, next thing for us to do, apart from tidying up our hair, is to make the, the legs. So I will probably stop the video here, because all you need to do is, um, we'll stop this one, I'll start it again in about 10 minutes, when I've cut the four legs, you have a template. So don't worry about getting the exact shape, obviously you see, just get the length. So that's the front leg. And those are the hind legs. So just get roughly the right length. And you don't want them to be any thinner than that. If anything, you want them to be thicker so you can trim them down. Um, so if you make your four legs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, um, you know, just cut a bit of clay. And you'll see, you can just see. So you squeeze them tighter. And then what I'll do is I'll roll it out on the table. And I can roll a big piece of wool. To be honest, what I do is, you know, I don't not really use the template, but what I would do is work out my size, which would actually it's generally the distance between the shoulders and the hind quarters, and then I would make a mark. So that tells me that's the length of the leg. So I, if I make a long sausage, I can just cut, cut, you know, cut four of them uh, going by the, the measures on the, the board. So I'll just let me just show you that. I'm just doing a super rough. Can you see? I think I wouldn't want it too much. So I wouldn't want my legs much thinner than that. Um, so you see on the template, they really are a good bit thinner than that, but that still allow you to trim them, to model them in. Um, so, what's a good guide for you? The thickness of the roll is about the thickness of the widest part of the leg. So with the hind leg, it would probably be about that thickness. Okay, so I'll leave you to cut your four legs. And if you've got a bit of clay left over, roll a wee tail again, it's on the template, the size. So I'll stop the video here for 10 minutes and I'll roll my legs. For you working at home, ideally, you would leave your sculpture and your legs, cover your sculpture with plastic bag, cover your legs with a cotton cloth, and leave them overnight. But what I'm going to do to speed things up, I'm going to put the hair dryer on these once I have them rolled into and cut to size. Okay, see you in 10 minutes. Okay, so I have cut two front legs, which are fairly straight. Um, all I'm looking for is that they're pretty similar in thickness and that they are straight. Um, if you let clay dry, it's easier to get them, you know, nice and firm and straight. Um, so the next thing I'll do is attach them and I'll attach the two front legs and then the two hind legs and I have given you a template with the donkey walking, uh, well just kind of taking a step forward. You can do that or you can simply put your four legs on quite straight with this donkey because I'm making him slightly grumpy, I want his legs, if he's digging his heels in. So I'm going to put the, the front legs at a bit of an angle. When you're attaching the... Um, so 
when you're attaching the leg, if you think of... So if you think of the leg being attached at this elbow, and think of that being your attachment point rather than the, the front, you don't want to try to, you want to avoid atta attaching the legs too far forward. The legs attach at the elbow, the back of the shoulder. So I'm just going to cross hatch them. Donkey's legs are quite straight. So if you feel you don't want to put too much detail, do you know, it will be quite convincing as long as you have the four legs similar thickness and that they're the bones are straight that they're not you know they're not in a sag um so i'm just gonna put this in making sure it lines up at the back and also the front leg almost attaches slightly under so this muscle um protrudes from on the leg I'm just going to cut this so it'll sit a bit longer. And then I'm just going to give that a wee squeeze. Oh yeah, that's just got a good firm rub. Anywhere it cracks, you go to water and give it a good firm rub. So I'm just sort of squeezing that just so I get that wee set up past and joint in there. Donkey legs are quite straight, so it's they're quite forgiving and they don't have big giant feet so um, you know as long as they're very well cared for we don't get just a very neat wee foot um i'm just going to notch this up so what i'll do when this dries a little i'll turn this a wee bit so that the if you think of the knee i've just shown them the template where the knee is and the two wee bones of the knee below the knee is narrower and above the knee. So I'm just going to take some of that off. But it's probably not ideal to do that when the legs are quite tight. Just to give you a little bit of an idea. And I'm just going to add a wee bit of clay on here at the top. Just where that elbow would be. And just blend it in. Oh, I'm getting way too long and my toes just fell apart there. Let me see if I've got some stuff. Let me blend this in. Oh, sorry. You weren't able to hear that. I had a big glass of water there and something just gurgled all over. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, the other thing to remember is if you think of the narrow front leg fitting into a wee bit of a V. And the V just is because of the muscle there. So I'll just tuck that in under. Okay. And we'll be taking some of this away because remember the, the, the rib cage, the chest, goes in behind the elbow around to the front. Yeah. Just the muscle of the So I want to look at the, the leg from the front. And much as I see when I narrowed it under the knee there, if you make a scratch, okay now this is this is fiddling about it that you don't need to do, you could simply just cut a roll for tubes and stick them on and it's still going to be quite a convincing donkey but this is just 
we just want to take it a wee stage further. More I don't want to narrow it. Just want to do that. I wanted to have a very, you know, feeling of that being a straight bone and to the knee and a straight bone below the knee. Even if you're, say I was, uh, I was having the wee donkey was stepping forward as one of the legs are in your template, still need to have the feeling that this is a straight line and that this is a straight line for those bones. Now, there's only so much narrowing away you can do. I've only just rolled this leg with the hairdryer on it for five minutes. I left it for five minutes, stuck it on. So really, I need to leave that for a day or two and then go into it and carve into it to refine it and just make sure this is a nice, clean push shape. Yeah. So let's rub the other side and then we'll just repeat on the other side. You ain't thinking of the leg all splitting into you know and got almost a little bit of a V. Um that's all it takes. Okay, it's a little cross stitch. And again, I want my, my donkey to look like it's digging through the thing. So I'm going to move it slightly forward. So I'm going to be pressing that in until, I want to press it in until the slip squidges out the whole way around. I have left this for a day or two. The other thing is from this pose I want the it will give more of a feeling of the donkey sticking its heels in if instead of having those legs dead you know dead straight I'm going to splay them out because that's kind of the way they would do to get a better grip on the ground is just to splay them slightly. I'll come back into that and trim that. You know, the other thing is to watch for, watch your two knees are the same height. You know, you can't have a one knee up here and one one knee on that leg there and the other leg there. So you're going to go straight across. Just make sure we use the same space. And then whenever that clay is drier, I will take this and leave it here. And so anyway, that leg will be all narrowed. Let's try a little more. So then onto the hind legs. I have given you a template. All you really need to take from the template is the bend of the hock and the rough thickness. Again, you're better having it too thick than too thin. When you put the two together, you want those hocks to be in the same 
but yes, it's in the level. Um, so I'm going to have this later. It's just really, really, you know, everything he has got is resisting being pulled forward and we knew he was going to kick, raise his legs and give it a little kick. So, donkey's hind legs are fairly straight as well. They wouldn't have like much flexion as a horse. So to join these two together, I'm going to take, just because of the full drama, the high drama, cut them off the top. You put them together, you decide on your angle, and then if you can see, I do, I'll just mark that across there. And that means if I cut this away, those two should slide in very nicely and fit. Scroll how to use the slip. And again, um, I'll just take a wee slice off that so it's just more level. So there's actually three stages to the legs. There's this stage we're working on now, getting them slightly thicker than you want them to be, roughly the right length, and really. This stage is really mainly about the pose. Uh, if it's going to be walking, standing, trotting, it's mainly getting the pose in. Leave it for a day and then you refine the shape. And then again, leave it for a day. It'll start to get fine or firm. Take your support away and then I will make a video of it. Make sure it stands nice and flat. Um, at that point. Um, so think of those three different stages for the legs, the getting the pose, the narrowing it down and making sure it stands level. And so today we're mainly just working on getting the pose. And what you're looking for with the hawk is to have a nice curve from a nice really high tight bottom and a nice curve of the hook, like I've got on. So, with the four legs, you almost tuck them in slightly underneath the muscle of the shoulder. With the hind legs, I'm actually going to add a wee bit of muscle on from, you know, this would be the, the stifle. So we're actually going to add a wee bit on. It will also act as a strengthener, but that comes um, from that stifle down. There's a point here. So, and then what we'll do is we will take a good length around it and we'll just try and get a more of a curve. So, this was the four leg was tucked in under. We really need to think of this muscle. When I'm adding this clay muscle, I'm overlapping the join. I've added this is the lower leg where I've so underneath the slip, this would be the join and putting this clay on over the top to overlap. Um about here it blends in. So it stays quite proud here. And then it blends in where she's in there. Triangle. That over. You know, do you want the slip to be squidging out from all sides? This should give us that as a good um, join. I think you could just, there's just, there's not enough slip squidging out there, so I'm just going to put another wee bit of clay on that. will twin these hind legs. The other thing about the hind legs, seen from behind, this area here is called the hock, which is like a wee round joint. Rather than the leg being straight on, nine times out of ten, that hock 
um, well, it's slightly twisted inwards. And the reason for that is it's to do with the motion of the leg. So when a, a donkey or a horse is going forward, their legs don't swing perfectly forward. The leg will, if you think of it, it's no good way of thinking of it, the leg nearly swings out past the belly. It doesn't swing as much as that, but when that leg's going forward, it will go forward um, slightly outwards a wee bit. And actually the, in, the front legs go slightly in, inwards when they're, they're moving. Um, to use this information for you. But the, the hawk pointed slightly towards the centre rather than the leg being totally uh, rather than the leg being totally square, it's slightly to the side. So you just you can use your template to guide you to to a nice new angle on them. And then this will Uh, I will need to be better if I thin this out tomorrow or later today. But, you know, you can put those legs straight down and they'll still be quite a convincing donkey. And then just the other hand bag in the same we sort of allowed to not hold it to the corner of that top there. So I put it whatever angle I want. So um again I want it to be sort of braced forward like that. Um if I say if I had it walking and the leg was out behind it, I would position that first and then make your your cut. Um, another way to do it is to cut through both surfaces. Um, it's a bit harder to show you all. Um, so I'll try to take you. So at the end of that's a wee bit hard. Say you've left overnight and it's quite dry. Take the top of it off. Position it into whatever angle. Like if you're, you had it walking like that. Or I want mine slightly braced forward. And you just cut that together. Okay. It's very important those hawks line up. So then we're just going to get that the muscle on over the top. Try and see again. So it overlaps down. So I'll just sort of press it about that thickness to go over the top of the rug. Just get the end of the muffin up here. Allowed to stay proud here and it gets blended in just above the neck.
need to send the letter. Okay, so um, day two of the legs, you would just thin these out and make them more even. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just make me a tail and pop the tail on. So, um, obviously, the tail central to the spine. And just a little bit lower. So a firmish press so that the flip squidges out, but then blend to nothing at the top. So don't blend to nothing at the sides here, just blend to nothing at the top. And then because my donkey is quite a donk, probably donkey, he's going to be swishing his tail. Okay, so then all that's left to do, once you've left it to dry, then the legs, um, hollow it out. You'd hollow it out before you add the legs if you're going to fire it. What I'll do is, because I'm going to fire this wee boy, I'm actually going to stop the video, take the legs off and put them aside, hollow it out, and then I'll put the legs back on. But I just wanted you to see all the processes for the people who are making it with air drying clay and don't really need to worry about um, hollowing it out. Okay, and then you can just have fun putting some texture in, you're getting your making the little forehead nice and shaggy here, creating different sort of textures, fine in the ears. Um, so I will put videos up on Monday of um, the next few processes I go through with this wee boy, but hopefully today will have given you enough information to make your little donkey. If I can help in any way at all, just send me a wee uh, message and I will do my best to give you more detail or any advice you might need. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing uh, pictures of your donkeys when they're finished. Thank you and remember tomorrow I have a super easy one at half past ten. At half past ten and it should only take about an hour.